first of all, what it means to be a legal lawyer. I'm going to write you to the farm office first. What it means to be an even or an odd function. So, first of all, um, if we're looking graphically, even functions are symmetric about the y axis, meaning that they are mirror images. So, if you draw a line through the y axis, um, that's going to go straight through the middle of your graph and it's going to cut it into two symmetric pieces. Uh, so, for example, x squared. Okay, x squared is an even function. Now, the exponent does have a little bit to do with that, uh, but you have to be careful with that. We'll look at that here in a minute. Uh, the absolute value of x is an even function. Um, so, here's the important part. Here's what you need to, to be aware of. Opposite x values, so that's saying like x equals negative 3, and x equals positive 3, opposite meaning they have opposite signs, have the same y values. So if we're talking about x squared, then both x equals negative 3 and positive 3 have the y value of positive 9. Negative 3 over here, positive 3 over here, they have the same y value. It's that mirror image quality there. Odd functions are symmetric about the origin. Now that one's a little bit harder to visualize. It's more of a rotational thing. So I'm not going to delve too deep into that. Uh, but the thing to know there is that opposite x values have opposite y values. So for example, an odd function is the function uh, y equals x. So when we're talking about x equals negative 3, and x equals positive 3, then their y values are negative 3 and positive 3. The same number, just opposite sides. That's an odd function. Many of the functions that are out there are neither even nor odd. Okay, so it's just some of them are even, some of them are odd. A lot of them are neither. Uh, most of the ones we're going to be identifying are one of the two, but in reality, in the overall scheme of things, most functions are neither even or odd. They're really close to being one or the other, but they're not exactly. Okay? So, how are we going to determine this? We're going to use our calculators. Okay? We, we are going to type that equation into our y equals. Okay, so negative 3x squared plus 4. Now, for the sake of just looking at the symmetry, we're going to look at the graph here because I want to point that out. <clears throat> okay, if we look at this graph, the y-axis is right smack down in the middle of it. Okay, the left side, if we flip it over, would fall exactly on the right side or vice versa. Um, but the important thing that I really want you to look at is the table because sometimes the graph can be a little deceiving. So when you go to your table, make sure that it's centered up. Make sure negative 3 is at the top and positive 3 is at the bottom. So when you look at those y values, look at what we see right here. We've got negative 23 and negative 23. Negative 8 and negative 8. 1 and 1. And then we've got 4 right there in the middle. The opposite x values have the same y values. So that is an even function. Okay? Negative 3x squared plus 4 is an even function. Okay, let's check out 2x cubed minus 4x. 2x cubed minus 4x. I'm going to, well, let's, get, let's look at the table first and then we'll look at the graph. Okay, so my table is exactly where I left it last time. It's already lined up. X equals negative 3, the y value is negative 42. X equals positive 3, the y value is positive 42. So we have the same y values, they just have opposite sides. This is an odd function. When you look at the graph, <clears throat> if you can imagine taking your calculator and turning it upside down so that the number keys are at the top 
<clears throat> you can actually do it with like somebody beside you, okay? One of you holds your calculator like this, one of you flip it over, so that the numbers are at the top. The graph should look the same, okay? The graph should look the same. Uh, that's what the symmetry with an odd function is. It's rotational symmetry. If you rotate it 180 degrees, you end up with the same graph. That one's a little bit harder to see. That's why I don't focus on it as much. I focus more on the values. Uh, but it is a property of being an odd function. <clears throat> um, so notice on A, the exponent there is an even number. On B, the exponents are odd numbers. Okay, C, we're looking at a function, we've got both odd and even numbers. So, I don't know, let's see how this one turns out. 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 4. So let's look at that table. And our y values aren't symmetric at all. We have completely different y values at negative 3 and positive 3, negative 2, positive 2, so forth and so on. So c is an example of a function that is neither even nor odd. It's got a combination of both. And if we look at its graph, okay, it looks like the odd function that we just looked at, it's very similar to the odd function we just looked at, but notice it doesn't go through the origin. Um, and it's kind of, it's a little off center here. So if we were to rotate this graph, it would not look exactly the same as the original. <clears throat> Okay, let's look at D. D is a rational function, 3 over x squared plus 2. 3 over, make sure you get that x squared plus 2 in parentheses like it is on the paper. Now, most of the time, if you're dealing with a rational function, it's not going to have the parentheses uh, built in. Uh, but just because the way I was typing it, I wanted to make sure that it was there. Okay, looking at the table. Opposite x values have the same y values. Positive, 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 positive. Positive 0.5, positive 0.5. Positive 1, positive 1. So this is an example of an even function. Let's look at its graph. Okay. Plus, it looks a little weird. It looks kind of like a little hill almost. Um, but you can see that mirror reflection symmetry there. Okay, let's look at this absolute value function. And here's a good time for me to remind you where the absolute value button is. You don't just put parentheses around that x. You have to put the absolute value. So you type the 3. The absolute value bars, well, they're not really bars, but it's under math. You go over to num. That stands for number. And the very first option there says ABS. That stands for the absolute value. Put the X in there. X is the only thing inside the absolute value bar, so you close the parentheses and then plus 5. Let's look at the table. <clears throat> Opposite X values have the same Y values. So this one is also even. This one's also even. Let's look at its graph. Check for that symmetry. Y-axis goes right through the middle of it, <clears throat> and it is a mirror image. Okay, last one. Let's look at this trig function sine of x. Sine is below that blue apps button. Okay, sine of x. Okay, all this other stuff here. Okay, let's look at its table. Opposite x values have opposite y values. Same number, opposite signs. One of them's positive, one of them's negative. Now, in most of the cases that we've looked at for the odd ones, negative x values have negative y values. That doesn't have to be the case, okay? Negative x values can have positive y values, and the positive x values have negative y values. Um, it's just, you just have to make sure that they are opposite, whether um, the first batch is negative or the second batch is negative, it doesn't matter. 
They just have to be opposite. Okay, uh, and we can glance at the graph really quick. That's what the sine of x looks like. Um, so we'll deal more with that function later on in the semester, but there's a little sneak peek. Okay, so like I said, even odd, very simple concept. You just have to be able to put these functions into your y equals and then look at the tables. So I want you to take a minute. I've got a list of practice problems there for you to do. Determine the